you need to go to your settings right now and change these communication pings. First one that you want to put is that you can do it. You want to be supportive. You want to throw that positivity around to your team. Okay, you know my philosophy when I'm playing this game, I keep my team tilt free. The moment you enter the lobby, you just want to spam that. You can do it just one or two times. You're just showing your team. It's like, I'm here to be supportive. We're here to work together. We're here to climb, right? We're not here to ping each other and say, check it out all the time. So you can do it is definitely like, it's honestly one of my go-tos. I, I try and do it at the start of every match. Um, and that's just, again, it's just to spread There's a bit of positivity, okay? You can call it like superstitious or whatever, but I honestly think that your team will play better if they feel like they're working as a team and getting along with one another. Your laning partner will support you, your jungler will do a better job at gang right? It just, it's just really, really helpful for getting that, that, that positivity in the team, right? Get that positivity flowing through the team. Even if you get the early lead, it sort of like helps steamroll. But if you get behind and, and everyone gets a little bit flustered early in the game, if you just spam that you can do it or that let's keep pushing to the end, it just gives that feeling of, okay, well, my team's not going to tilt, my team's not going to get angry at one another. We're going to look for our win con and look to get back online into this game. So number one ping is that you can do it. I am a big advocate and I'm kind of sad that I don't see a little bit more of it. Ping number two is the watch out. Okay, that's like really helpful at a gank if you suspect that the jungle is up and your laning partner's not aware. You just, it's like a little reminder. It's like, hey man, watch out. Um, there could be someone here to kill you, <laughs> right? So just watch out. Um, or even at the rape hit, you know, watch out. Um, although at the rape hit, I typically prefer the avoid fighting we're outnumbered. Again, it's just a little bit of a reminder. I found it helpful myself. It's like you're kind of, in, you know, you go through the rhythm and you forget that your defender is off scoring or something like that. And it's just the, you just remind, reminding your team, just in case they're not map aware of, hey, by the way, we're outnumbered, so just don't go running into the fight straight away. But that watch out, I think it's really helpful because it's sort of like, it, it's like a little antenna for you and your team. It's like, hmm, something might be up. So let's just be a little bit more careful. We're not gonna walk aimlessly into the bush. And I know it sounds a little weird, but honestly, I actually find it really, really helpful sometimes. Now, and I just want to touch on this gameplay right here. Notice that we are pushing the Regilecki before the five minute mark onto that tier two goal. You're going to get value out of that, okay? The reason why it's before five minutes is because the enemies don't have the jump pad. And if they don't have the jump pad, then they can't get to defend that goal zone quicker than what they normally would when they're respawning. Now, I'm playing mega, mega risky here, but ultimately you are not dying, okay? You don't want to die. So I managed to get out alive, which is, you know, lucky me good for me I had a little bit of you know, team support there I went deeper than I should have but remember when when you are getting that value you don't want to give away the catch-up experience because that is throwing now again we've got this Reggie lucky here we look for value is it gonna go in a team's kind of pushing it uh, it looks like it's gonna be able to walk into the goal which gives us you know it means that the main base is opening up but we're trying to not to overcommit here okay I'm getting a little bit caught out there but notice how we're in their jungle, we're taking their farm, and then we're looking to run away. So now this ray fight, this is where the pings can become quite handy. You've got the watch out, the you can do it, the let's keep pushing to the end, and the avoid finding route. Now, all four of these pings have got some kind of utility here, right? So the fight's breaking out, we've killed two, we're looking like we're killing a third there, which is really nice. And then I'm, I'm going, hey, come on, let's do the red plaza while we've got a moment to spare. Right, so I'm kind of looking to zone there, um, looking to get vision for the team while they rip, and I'm just CCing, right? I'm just not letting them get into some kind of a position where they're able to secure that objective. And so we're able to do it there, which is, you know, really, really nice. Um, our team probably didn't have the rip. Maybe I probably should have been there, and as a rapid spin blast always as the rip. Um, you know, however, the pinks came in handy there, and that's one thing that you can do is you can highlight over the map something that you want to ping. Now, people normally use this in a toxic way to like hover over a teammate and ping their icon, which is normally that's sort of like the, you know, oh, I'm not very happy with you ping. And that's the one that we're trying to minimize, right? We're trying to minimize that one, and we're trying to hop on that you can do it train, right? So, straight away into this matchup here. You can see that my save player actually says that you can do it, which is so cool because this was the very next game from when I just changed the settings. So someone else on my team is like throwing the positivity out. And the last game you notice that our team got ahead early. You're going to notice in this game that our team does not get ahead early. 
Right, the Talonflame has been doing a really good job down the bottom by himself. Uh, the Wigglytuff has done pretty well top. I've gone in to try and support the jungler. Um, honestly, I've actually kind of let the team down a little bit here. And uh, dare I say that the jungler and I just didn't get the value that we should have out of that top lane. Especially considering how well our Talonflame did bottom. And the Sableye has been keeping their jungler busy in in the enemy jungle. So, uh, like, in terms of a start, honestly, not that great. And, like, at this point, I don't know what your experience with solo queue is, but typically the jungler will get pretty tilted. Um, pretty tilted. They'll get very tilted. You can notice the Wigglies obviously a little bit frustrated. Like, they've run bottom just because they're probably thinking they're going to get more value bottom. So, like, that's fair. But, you know, I think with the, like, we're spamming a couple positivity pings around the place in that, like, they might feel out of place just, you know, doing the check it out ping to me the whole time. Um, you know, which, like, which is fair enough, right? Like, this is on, like, this is a display of one of my laning phases. It is not as good. Um, but we get some value here, the jungler comes back up, and he looks to push there. Um, I notice he's just not going back for his buffs whatsoever, so I just take this as an opportunity, because as soon as he gets Solar Beam with Ivysaur, it is a completely different character, right? It is, it goes from being not so threatening to extremely threatening, and there we go. I'm like, you can do it, let's do this, let's push their goal zone, let's break, let's get this objective, and let's try and win this game after our pretty rough start. So I'm, I'm spamming it a couple of times because I'm trying to throw some positivity. Um, the Wiggly seems into it and the Sableye is kind of on board with it as well. So honestly, using these pings will give you, I'm gonna, dare I say, like a better experience when you're playing the game, right? Even if you're not on the receiving end of someone who's just endlessly pinging your team, it's like, it's actually really frustrating. Like it's really, really frustrating because that person's probably not playing the game properly and they're like a little bit tilted, so they're probably not gonna make the best decisions while they're playing, right? So it's honestly, it's about like almost keeping the team a little bit level header as well. Now that right there, we pop Unite and we get the Solar Beam uh, off. Now I get asked, why would I use Venusaur when I can just use Mew? And my answer is because Mew can't do that. Okay, Mew can't wipe down an entire lane um, with its Unite move because it doesn't get that option. You get a lot of other benefits, but that is absolutely not one of them. So the rest of this game is really, it's just going to be another display of why I think Solar Beam Venusaur is just so incredible. You can see I lagged out a little bit there. For some reason, the Solar Beam wasn't going off. I wasn't cancelling the Solar Beam. It just wasn't happening. Um, but once you hit level 13 with this character, oh man, look at how frequently these Solar Beams are being fired off. Like, this is just insane. This is insane damage. And you can see here that Garchomp's popped his ult, so he's not going to have it for Rayquaza. But even just this play right there, we still managed to pick up. We exchanged the Garchomp and I exchanged there. So really nice value. And uh, I die, but I'm definitely back in time for this Ray fight. And this is the huge value. You pop the Unite on a group of them and you just follow up. Look at the cooldown on Solovin. It's like four seconds. It's literally four seconds. Just absolutely destroy them. Absolutely destroy them. And that's one thing, like, if you've got the team that can provide you vision, definitely consider picking Venusaur into your matchups. But there you have it, those are pings. I really recommend using some of those pings if you're looking to climb and have a better experience on the game in Pokemon Unite.